Rich Tarani here in the TMC newsroom. Thanks for watching. We're at Cloud Expo 2012. We're at the Jacob Javits Center in Manhattan. On our program today is uh, DNA Nexus, and we've got uh, Mark Olison, who's farthest from me. He's the president and COO, and Andreas Sunquist. He's uh, the CEO and the co-founder. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Rich. So why don't we start off by just talking about uh, what your company does. So DNA Nexus is a DNA data management and analysis company. We built a technology platform for managing large amounts of DNA data in the cloud. And we do all the analysis, collaboration, visualization work that uh, geneticists and doctors um, use when they look at DNA data. So the goal there would be to help curing disease and to try to determine uh, what the coding of diseases are, is that the genetic makeup of a disease, is that accurate? Absolutely, our customers are researchers who want to understand biology and disease, doctors who want to treat patients, who look at cancer patients, people with rare genetic disorders, and ultimately all of them work with massive amounts of DNA data, and you know, we help them leverage the cloud to tease apart what's important and gain insight from that data. So would one of the potential goals be to determine how to design drugs that are more specific based upon someone's genetic makeup? Yeah, absolutely. One of the big areas of growth is around personalized medicine, where we look at treatment regimens, drugs, and better target those to the individual genetic makeup of, of uh, us as individuals. Yeah, well, what we're really doing is leveraging technology to drive and improve the treatment. So taking genomics, combining that with technology, and then creating personalized medicine and, and treatment. So deciphering the human genome, which was done uh, well, approximately what, eight to 10 years ago, and that was kind of like the first step down this journey of using big data to more accurately determine genetic makeup of individuals. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, it was an exciting milestone, I think, for, for all of um, uh, genomics research. 10 years ago, it took billions of dollars and over a decade to sequence the first genome. Now we can do it in almost a day and for almost a thousand bucks. So that's a huge improvement, and it's you know, going from a world where nobody had their genome to a world where everybody's going to have their genome. So it's a, it's a big change over the last 10 years. You know, the rapid acceleration or really drop in the cost of the genome is creating a big data challenge or opportunity, depending on how you look at it. With every genome uh, being, you know, a couple hundred gigabytes of data, that's a, that's a big challenge, and so now, really the challenge has moved from generating the sequence to actually being able to effectively analyze the sequence. And again, you know, driving improved medical treatment around genomics. And so it seems to me that we're really entering an exciting time in not only technology but biology whereby we'll be able to determine the results of individual drugs on people and maybe even have smartphone apps that can harness that data put them back into the cloud or put that data back into the cloud for more uh, analysis and deciphering to determine how to create even better drugs going forward that are that are more, um, that I guess a more, um, it's a word I'm looking for, gentlemen? <laughs> more accurate or, or more uh, effective, how's that? Well I think as Mark was saying earlier, there absolutely is an acceleration of uh, discovery and personalization of medicine as a result of DNA sequencing and all the data that's coming out of it. So I think the goal is ultimately to improve human health and you know this is a way to do it. So we're very excited about that. We think it's really important to have a collaborative platform, really as you're saying, and the platform will have a set of apps, just like you talked about, apps to be able to effectively analyze the data and also um, you being able to combine different analytical tools together to again really drive the research. Now, do we have to be concerned about privacy issues with genomes? Are people going to be worried that their genome got out and someone hacked into it and they posted it on the internet? Or it, it seems to me like that's not going to be an issue, but could that happen and would that potentially be an issue going forward? I think all of the steps that need to be taken around preserving the privacy and integrity of the data are similar whether the data is stored on premise at an institution or at a business or stored in the cloud. Right? It's really a partnership between the technology that's storing the data and the people who are interfacing with that data. 
Now there is a challenge now that I think about it of, um, I know insurance companies getting a hold of this sort of data and being able to potentially charge you a higher rate because you're predisposed to life-threatening diseases. I guess that's still something that's being worked out in the industry in terms of having your data in the hands of an insurance company that, that could potentially use it against you, right? So there are actually regulations and laws. So for example, there's a law called GINA that prevents or prohibits insurance companies from using genetic information to charge you different rates. Uh, I agree that it is a concern, and I think you know, we should be very careful about who has access to the data, and that's one of the things that DNA Nexus enables us to do. Control better who has access to that data. Your primary physician, you as a patient, uh, but nobody else. Okay, so uh, final question is, who is your ideal target customer, and why would they work with you as opposed to either building a solution themselves or working with a competitor? Our target customers range from the researcher who's actually doing the work to, to drive the treatments and the clinic itself, the medical providers who can then take advantage of those treatments, um, have their patients sequenced and then really have more definitive and, and deterministic um, opportunities for them to improve their health. Excellent gentlemen, thanks for being on the program. This was great. Thanks for having us. Thanks for